Hi everybody, this is Mr. Claus, and you are at Station 2 now, which deals with permeability. You're going to be doing some experiments to see how particle size affects the permeability, and you're also going to watch this video to tell you exactly what permeability is and why it's important. So we define permeability as how quickly and easily water flows through a rock or a soil sample. Here's the example. So here in the example, you can see the water around the different particles, which are the little red balls in the soil sample. As we let the water through, you can see that it flows out and into the container below. Now, this is the permeability of the sample. If it were to flow through faster, we would say it has a higher permeability. And I'll actually let the water go again. If it were to flow through slower, we would have, say it has a lower permeability. In this class, we're not going to put a number on permeability. We're just going to say that the permeability is either high or low, and we have to compare it to something else. If it flows through faster, it would be higher permeability. If it flows through slower, it would be lower permeability. So what I'm going to show you now is how to do a permeability test. We're going to test the permeability of this sand. What I need for the permeability test is a tube like this. It has a little bit of a screen in the bottom so the sand doesn't get through, but water can get through. Now, I already filled this tube up with sand. What we want to do is we want to test its permeability. How easily can water go through that sand? So what I'm going to do, put a glass on the bottom to collect the water. Pour my test water in. And as soon as I'm done doing that, I'm going to hit the start button on my timer. And the faster it goes through, the higher the permeability of this sand. While we're waiting for our sand permeability test to finish, there's one other thing we need to talk about and I'm going to show you. And that's this concept called capillarity. Have you ever noticed that when you put a paper towel into water, and this is just colored blue water, the water is actually able to climb up the paper towel a little bit? Well, that's because of something called capillary action. I'm going to demonstrate it with these three glass tubes. The last one. There's a big one, a medium-sized one, and a really small one here. And if you notice one of the big one, when I put it in, you see the water is able to climb up just a little ways out of the blue water right there. It's maybe half a centimeter up. It's able to climb a little bit higher with the medium one. You can see that it makes it maybe almost a full centimeter up. The last tube is the really small one, and it's going to be tough to see. You can see that the water makes it there it goes. Even further up. That's because water is able to stick to itself. The reason that this is important for class is when you have saturated ground. You have what's called the saturated zone and then the unsaturated zone where there's water between the particles and then uh, air between the, sand, or the soil particles. You also have what's called a capillary fringe where some of the water is able to climb up by the same reason it climbed up here. Now let's get back to our sand permeability test. So here we are back at our sand permeability test. You can see that pretty much all of the water has now made it through the sand. We have this kind of sandy water here. Uh, I'm going to stop my timer. And the timer says 9 minutes and 23 seconds. You're going to want to go ahead and write that time on your lab sheet. 9 minutes, 23 seconds.